I am here to do a little book haul. Let's just go right into it. No preamble, no beating about the bush. <laughs> I think that's the expression. Let's start with God Killer by Hannah Kenner. This was a Waterstones pre-order that came out in January. As I said, special edition, which I have started reading. That's the first book that I wanted to mention. There are another two books which have appeared in the last few vlogs on the channel, and that was Mysteries of Thorn Manor by Margaret Rogerson, which I literally purchased in the first few days of the year and then read immediately after. And also The Stolen Air by Holly Black, which was also pre-ordered. I think it came out on the 5th of January and I also read it immediately after. I'm 90% sure that it was in the same video as that one over there. Really love this book. If you want to know more thoughts and haven't watched that video, now it's your cue but wait till the end of this one, please. <laughs> Next, I had quite exciting new box, which I've talked about on my Instagram. So there's this new box on the market. The first month was February, and that is the Locked Library. So this box is technically part of the HarperCollins uh, Publishers group. It's obviously focused on special editions of new books coming out that month by HarperCollins or any of the other publishers under HarperCollins' name. And the book, the first book from this subscription box, is The Thorns Remain. It's a fae story. I think that it's a historical, like, urban fantasy. And I'm gonna read you the synopsis, but first I'm just gonna show you the edition because obviously it's a special edition. Let me show you. Can you see that? Has a beautiful cover, beautiful sprayed edges that just match the rest. It continues all the way around and then when you open it up you have the same design on the end papers and then this is the hardback without the jacket. It's the similar design but just a few of the plants on the front and then the two dancing in the middle which is actually the same image from the main cover and the side, the spine, I mean. It also has a little ribbon, which is exciting because actually the majority of special editions don't come with the ribbon and it's always a little nice addition to it. This is a kind of 400 page book, so it's relatively big. 1919, in a highland village forgotten by the world, the young people who remain after war and flu will soon head south to make something of themselves. Moira Jean and her friends venture to the forest for a last night of laughter before parting ways. She planned to leave two ones, but her lover died in France and with him her future. The friends light a fire and dance, but with every twirl about the flames, strange new dancers thread between them. Music streaming from the trees. The Fay have joined them. Suddenly Moira Jean finds herself all alone, her friends spirited away. For the Fay, led by the darkly handsome lord of the Fay, feel left behind and forgotten too. They are out to make themselves known once more. Moira Jean must enter into a bargain with the lord to save her friends and fast. For the longer they stay with the Fae, the less like themselves they will be upon return. If Moira Jean cannot save her friends before Beltane, they will be all lost forever. Bewitching, threaded with Highland charm, and sparkling with romance, this fairy tale will carry you away. And yes, that is exactly why I feel excited about this, because it's going to be a kind of historical, dark, heavily based in nature, fey romance story. I mean, what more could I want? 
I just need this to be good. Next, and my only pre-order of February is Immortality, A Love Story, which I have, I did also add to my 2023 TBR, the video that I did in the beginning of the year, as it is the sequel to Anatomy, A Love Story, which I read last year and also filmed a video of the reading experience. I am very excited for this. This one is bigger than the last one. I think this one is almost 400 pages, the other one was 300 pages. It sounds good, I'm obviously not gonna read the synopsis of this one because it's the second one in the series, but I will tell you a little bit about Anatomy, which is all about, it's a historical kind of fantasy story. It's set in the 1800s and it's all about a, a rich girl and she wants to be a surgeon, but obviously this is a man's job. You can't even study as a woman to become a surgeon. And so she kind of pretends to be a boy to go to classes, but then she's found out. And so she makes a deal with this professor and if she can pass the exam, she'll become a surgeon. But things start to spiral and she also hires and then befriends a a guy which I've forgotten the name of his job he digs up bodies. So she hires Jack to help her dig up bodies and so she can study them and then they become friends and maybe more. It's actually more exciting than I thought it was gonna be. I really enjoyed it. It was a very good YA story and I'm excited to read the sequel. Because of that book, actually, I finished a Waterstones card, so I had 10 pounds to spend. Um, and I ended up getting two books. The first one is A Fire Wilder Magic by Alison Saft, which I had had on my wish list for ages and I was hoping to get it for my Kindle. How my kind of Kindle wish list works is any book I want, I just literally put it on a giant wish list. And then kind of once a week, I go through it and I see if there's any that are at 99p. And if there are any, I get them. But it does also mean that some that never got to 99p have been there for ages, including this one. Let's get into the synopsis. An intoxicating love story set against a mythical hunt. In the gothic town of Wickdom, Maggie Wealthy lives alone in an old creaking manor. But when she spots the Hala, a legendary fox creature, she knows the Halfman hunt will soon follow. Whoever kills the Hala will earn fame and riches. While Maggie is the best sharpshooter in town, she needs the help of an alchemist to be in with the chance of winning. Enter Wes Winters. Fired from every apprenticeship, this is his last chance. Maggie and Wes make an ultimate team. A charismatic but troubled boy and a girl who has endured life in a town that never welcomed her. But the pair are drawn together as they uncover dark magic that could be the key to winning the hunt, if they survive that long. I've heard that this is kind of inspired by Howl's Moving Castle, which is very exciting. <laughs> And you can see that by the charismatic but troubled boy. It sounds very good. It sounds very exciting and I want to read it immediately. But I am thinking of doing, as it kind of matches my goal for this year, I'm thinking of doing a few throughout the year, kind of start a series of reading vlogs based on cozy fantasy. And I feel like this this is gonna be in the first one. Yeah, it's in my immediate TBR, 100%. I got A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy I. Lynn. I've heard Carrie Can Read on YouTube talk about this. She read it. She really enjoyed especially the first one. It just sounded really good. Also has the kind of cozy fantasy vibes. I know there's a little bit of romance as well, but it's mostly focused 
on this. Let me read the synopsis. For Ning, the only thing worse than losing her mother is knowing that it's her own fault. She was the one that who unknowingly brewed the poison tea that killed her. The poison tea that now threatens to also take her sister's shoe. When Ning hears of a competition to find the kingdom's greatest master of the ancient and magical art of tea making, she travels to the imperial city to compete. The winner will receive a favor from the princes, which may be Ning's only chance to save her sister. But between the backstabbing competitors, bloody court politics and a mysterious and handsome boy with shocking secret, Ning's life may actually be the one in more danger. It's a tea competition, which sounds amazing. It's also Asian inspired and I'm curious to explore more. This one is definitely one I'm very excited for. And now, finally, finally, I'm getting onto the stack that we got in London yesterday. Starting with these two, I would maybe consider them essays. They're 100 pages, uh, one of them, and the other one doesn't even reach the 100 pages. This one is the Care Manifesto by the Care Collective, which is a radical vision demanding we put care at the very heart of our lives and politics. It talks about um, how we should move forward after what we've been through in the last years. And the other one we got is Echo Socialism, Not Extinction. Let me read a synopsis on this one. The planet is facing an existential crisis. Modern humans, in particular, under capitalism, have been doing irreversible damage to the ecosystems. An exit strategy from fossil energy and intense animal agriculture is urgent. It must be based on a socially and economically just transition to renewable and a completely new relationship with the natural world. The current rate of growth of the global capitalism economy, which doubles every 25 years, is completely unsustainable on a finite planet. A powerful mass movement is needed now to win urgent mitigation measures to defend the planet. But capitalism may only be able to save the planet with a form of barbarism because of its insatiable greed for profit. We therefore also need to fight for system change towards an eco-socialist society if we are not to face extinction. This book is an introduction to eco-socialism and how to fight for it. I want to read it and I want to become part of the movement. I think it's quite an important read, which I'm excited to get to in the near future. Moving on to Prince and the Dressmaker, which is a queer LGBTQI plus graphic novel. I'm not sure how, because I haven't read too much about it honestly. But I think it's about a prince that their parents are trying to get him marry married. But yeah, at night he puts on bearing dresses and takes Paris by, by storm as the fabulous Lady Crystalina, the hottest fashion icon in the world's capital of fashion. So excited to read this. It sounds good. I hope there's some sort of magic. It may not, maybe there's no magic. But I did think there was some sort of fantasy element. Maybe it's just historical. Eh, I'll have to see. But yeah, excited. And obviously we'll try to read it this month because I love me some graphic novels and it's obviously a quick read. Oh, I just love graphic novels. But yes, the last th three books I got are all nature inspired. One is a kid's book. Uh, it's called By Ash, Oak and Thorn by Melissa Harrison. Let me read the synopsis. What in a wild world is happening? Three little people, no bigger than your hand, wake up from their winter sleep in the hollow trunk of an old ash tree. Moss, burnet and cumulus usually love spring, but their joy turns out to worry when they discover that cumulus, the oldest, is starting to fade away. The trio leave their beloved home in search of answers, 
Guided by birds, stars, and wild creatures, they set out to find more of their kind. Other hidden folk are rumored to live in an ancient oak on the bank of a stream, deep in the countryside. But they soon learn that they must travel much further to a loud, busy, and danger-filled place called the Hive. And yeah, it's about how we should protect the protect wildlife, I guess. But it's kind of magical and very cute, and yeah. I want to read that. It's most definitely a kind of cottagecore cozy fantasy as well, so. I just want to mention the last two books. One is Oak and Ash and Thorn. It's a non-fiction book, but it's all about the magic and mystery of the woods, how they're embedded in our culture from ancient folklore to modern literature, and how we should take care of it so it continues to be a real thing that is part of the culture. It doesn't just get lost and we just lose a part of ourselves, basically. That was a bit too dramatic, wasn't it? <laughs> Finally, I have a kind of magical, but also non-fiction book. So it's The Wheel of the Year, Your Nurturing Guide to Discovering Nature's Seasons and Cycles by Rebecca Beatty. Nurture yourself through the 13 seasons with the Wheel of the Year, an enchanting celebration of eight key restorative moments in nature's cycle, from solstice and equinoxes to those midpoints in between. So basically, it's a book talking about important points throughout the year, celebratory um, kind of festivals. You obviously have Samhain and Beltane and Yule, uh, which are all pagan festivals. And it just talks about that in a, a little bit scientific, but also just in general non-fiction way. Just how to incorporate these days of celebration that have been a lot of cultures for centuries and centuries. How to bring it to the present day. Yes, that is it. I have gotten to the end of this little book haul. I hope you enjoyed it. I can see a kind of theme. It has a lot of natural, cozy books, um, but also talking about nature and society and how not to destroy our beautiful world. And I'm very sorry about the light again. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm quite excited to get to all of these. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.